tolerance. When measuring parts with a metric micrometer, the procedure will be similar to using an inch micrometer. However, the resulting measurements will look quite different. In order to read the measurement currently displayed on this metric micrometer, you must first determine the number of whole millimeters. Since each graduation mark below the baseline equals one millimeter, and you can see two full graduation marks past five millimeters, the number of whole millimeters is seven. Now you must look at the space between the seven and the edge of the thimble. Since you can see the graduation line between the seven and the eight millimeter marks, you now add 50 hundredths to your measurement. If you're not sure whether or not the half millimeter graduation has been crossed, look at the thimble scale. If the thimble reading is in the high range, the graduation has not been crossed and is not counted. But if the thimble reading is in the low range, the graduation has been crossed and is added to the measurement. Now look at the graduation marks on the thimble. There are 50 equal spaces on the thimble, each one representing one hundredth of a millimeter. Since 31 is the last full graduation mark to cross the baseline, you add 31 hundredths to the measurement. With all the information gathered and written down, it is now time to add the pieces together to obtain an accurate measurement. The measurement is read 7 millimeters, 81 hundredths, or 7 millimeters, 810 microns. Some metric micrometers will have a vernier scale, so it is possible to read measurements to thousands of a millimeter. Read these micrometers the same way you would an inch micrometer, but remember that the metric vernier value represents the...